In this video, we're going to look at how we can spread durations into various years. Hello, I'm Philip Burson of filecats.co.uk. So here you can see the code in SQL Server. It just creates a table called dates and inserts five rows into it with a start date and an end date. What I want to do is create these columns with the correct number of days. So this first one, for instance, we start off on the 5th of January 2016 and go through to some date in 2020. So the number of days in 2016, while well, there's 366 days because it's a leap year, but we're not counting the first four, so that makes 362. We then have full years in 2017, 2018 and 2019, and we finish off with the first three months. That gives us 91 days. So this needs to cope with periods going over a particular year. It also needs to cope with periods in the same year and at the beginning and the end of the year and in the middle. So you can see each of these is one day. Now there are various ways of doing this. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how we can use a pivot to make the calculations a bit easier. But in this video, we're going to do some repetitive coding for 2016, 2017, 2018, and so on. If you would like to do this as a practice activity, then the code that you can see on screen is in the description to this YouTube video. Good luck. So let's start. First of all, I need to have a start date and an end date for that particular year. So when does 2017 start and end? Well, it starts on January the 1st and ends on the 31st of December. But suppose we had a period which was the 4th of the 6th to January. So we've got there 6 minus 4 is 2, but we need 3 days. We need the entirety of the 4th, the entirety of the 5th, and the entirety of the 6th. So what we do is instead of saying that would be the 4th of January to the 6th of January, because that would only equal really 2 days, because we need the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th, we say the 4th of the January at midnight through to the 7th of January at midnight. So that would equal 3 days. So in 2017, what we say is it goes from the 1st of January at midnight to the 1st of January in 2018 at midnight. So the end date needs to be pushed forward by one day, say from the 1st of May to the 2nd of May, or the 31st of December to the 1st of January, to allow us to have the full computation of that last day included. So let's have a look at the start and the end dates for this. So the start date should be, well, 1st of January, 2017. However, for this one, it should be the 10th of May, the 1st of January, the 31st of December. What do we do for this line? Well, we need the start date and the end date to signify that there will be no days in 2017. Let's concentrate on the other rows and see if that happens automatically. So we've got the start date and the end date. Now, what is the first day of our period? Well, the first day of our period in here should be the relevant start date. So we'll put start date as the first date. So let's just run that now. So that will work for these, but we're talking about 2017. So the first date shouldn't be a day in 2016. It needs to be in 2017. So what we need to say is case when the start date is in 2017 or beyond, then give me the start date. Otherwise, so else, give me the start of the year. And we need to put an end at the end of a case. So let's just have a look at that. So now we have got these being in 2017. We have the first date of this period in 2017 being the 1st of January. And this one remains in 2018. We'll see how we can use that to our advantage. Now, what's the last date going to be? Well, it's the same thing. If the last date is in 2017, or maybe even earlier, then keep it like that. Otherwise, we need to make it, well, I would say the 31st of December 17, but remember, it needs to be midnight the following day. So it'd be the 1st of January 2018. So, case when 
If the end date is less than 2018, notice this one is less, not less than equal to. So if it is exactly equal to January the 1st, then I don't want it to be covered. Now, in reality, it doesn't make any difference for this particular example, but generally you should always be careful about what signs you use and whether they use equals. In this example, it will work out to exactly the same thing. So if the end date is n below 2018, so it's in 2017, 2016, 2015, then give me that end date. Otherwise, give me 2018, January the 1st. So that is the last date in 2017. So let's have a look at it and see if it works. And you can see it works for here. So this one, the last date in 2017 is midnight on January the 1st, 2018. It works for here. So we have our last date in 2017 being January the 1st, 2018. And it's going to happen that this is going to be in negative duration. However, it's not going to work for here because here we're having zero days. It's going from midnight of the 10th to midnight of the 10th. So what we need to do is advance this end date by one. So how do we do that? We use the date add function. So we add a day to the end date. So now let's have a look at it. So now we go from midnight of the 10th to midnight of the 11th. So that gives us our one day. So how do we then work out the number of days between these two? Well, we just put a date diff around this. So date diff. So calculate the number of days between this. Now we don't need these aliases now and this. And then we close the bracket and we say days in 2017. So you can see that we have 365 days in 2017 for this first period as it starts before 2017 and ends after 2017. For each of these, it's correctly identified that there is one day. And here we have a negative duration. So that's telling me that there aren't any days in 2017. So what I need to do is say, if it's negative, make it zero. Well, the easiest way for me to do that is with a CTE, a common table expression. So I just say with my days as, and then close this in brackets. And then I can just say select star from my dates. So that just creates a temporary view as it were, which I can then use in this. It is very temporary. It is only for this one particular statement. So this gives me exactly the same thing. And then I can say start date, end date, and then case when days in 2017 is less than zero, they give me zero, or you could give me null if you want, else give me the days in 2017 end as days in 2017. So if it's less than zero, give me zero, else give me the value. So here you can see the result. So there aren't any days in 2017. And if I change this to null, you will be able to see that it more clearly comes from this calculation. Here there are one day in 2017, and here there's the entirety of the year. So that's 2017. So how do we do it for 2016, 2018, and all the rest? Well, what we need to do is we need to copy this multiple times. So let's copy and paste. So that's 2016, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, for instance. So I've just pressed the insert button that allows me to overwrite what's here rather than having to delete and then type. So it just allows me to do it just fractionally quicker. And then I've got to change all of the fixed references within this query. And then at the end, I need to change all of the dates names. So let's just say select star from my dates just temporarily and have a look and see what we get. 
So here you can see all of these negatives showing that there aren't any days in this period. But we still have the correct calculation here. Now we've got a calculation for this particular line, 63 days. So that's March and April is 61 days. That will get me up to the 20th. And then there's the 20th itself. And the 21st, that's 63 days. And here we have 91 days, which is January, February in a leap year and March. So what we need to do now is get rid of all of the minus numbers, all the negative numbers. So let's uncomment that. And it's just a case again of a lot of pasting. Now, obviously one of the disadvantages of this method Firstly, it makes your code a bit more complex because you're doing the same thing repetitively. Secondly, well, what happens when we get into periods where there's 20, 22, 23, 24, 25? That will mean going in and altering this code. Alternatively, you could set it up to begin with to have as much capacity as you want. So now you can see the end result with all of the negatives removed. In the next video, we're going to see how we can do this with a pivot. So that means that the actual calculations that we need to do, we only have to do the calculation once and then we turn it around so that we have 2016, 2017 and so forth going across. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this practice activity. If you did, why not like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so that you can be notified of more videos when they come out. If you want more practice activities, please click the link on your screen. Or why not join me in my Udemy courses, where you can learn about TSQL, Database Administration, SSRS, SSAS, SSIS, and more. There are full details in the description to this video, or on my website, filecats.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching this, and keep learning.